Hi everyone, welcome to The Forge. My name is Feza Wuklem Tonti. I am the Performing Arts Programmer here at The Forge. Um, we're so sorry that we're starting late. This is what happens when you do live broadcast. Things just happen in the world. Um, so thank you so much for your patience. Thank you so much for waiting and um, being so ready to receive uh, the incredible work of these three gentlemen who are also um, part of a group with two other fantastic women and that's the kind of a Slilo collective. I'm going to let them introduce themselves in a second. Um, but before I do that, I just want to introduce you to the space if you are new to this YouTube page. Um, so the Forge is a Pan-African Progressive Cultural Center. We love feminist, um, progressive, pan-African, thoughtful uh, people, right? Um, and we, you know, in, in academia, everyone kind of talks about all the phobias and that can mean everything and nothing at the same time. So all the isms and the phobias, right? Those are the things that we are completely against. So racism, sexism, homophobia, xenophobia, Afrophobia, um, queerphobia, um, uh, ableism, ageism. Uh, this is a, a place where um, we recognize that party politics are incredibly divisive in the context of working class and oppressed people. So we really try to interrogate the state at every opportunity that we can because we think the millions and millions of South Africans that are not represented um, in the struggles of oppressive people um, is just incredibly frightening, you know? And so this is a space for, for folks like that who don't necessarily feel that they have a platform, who think that they need to organize, who are cultural workers, who are musicians, who are just interested and curious in the world. So that's the Forge and that's the event space. Across the road, we have the incredible Commune Bookshop. Um, the Commune has an extensive, beautiful repository of books um, that have been carefully curated um, for the ends of pan-African progressive radical politics. Um, so please come and, you know, uh, come to the, to the commune and see what we have available there. Um, so that's the kind of like bookshop, but it also doubles up as a coffee shop um, and also as an event space. Of course, this Friday we have our favorite DJ in the universe, Uncle Gary. Um, uh, one of our co-managers of the shop um, put a quote together. I'm going to miss, I'm going to miss, um, uh, oh, English is not coming to me today. <laughs> um, so, so basically, it is it, the, the quote says, "If I can't dance in your revolution, then I want none of it." And so, um, Linda Hamakumo put that up for us, and that was, I think, really important to speak about the two spaces. Right? That's effectively what we think. We think that culture is at the site of um, political understanding, of her historical understanding, of social understanding. We know that cultural revolutions always start the conversation before big political revolutions. It's the 150th, 150th anniversary of the Paris Commune, which the Commune was named after. The communists knew fundamentally that it was artists that were going to change the world. And that's how, you know, the French Revolution began and that's how we understand rights and suffrage in the world because of those communards who also took a very strong um, stand against xenophobia, against classism, against imperialism, against um, all these incredible injustices that were happening in, in France. So, you know, we take, we take our guide from them. We take our guide from 1804, the Haitian Revolution. Um, those are important things in the memory of the forge and in the memory of the commune. So we also know that, that artists were fundamental to that story. We know that without the theater groups in Peter Maritzburg, black consciousness just would not have been black consciousness. Let's not lie to each other, right? We know without the, the poets and the literature groups that emerged, that then Steve Biko and others kind of tapped into when they were um, in KZN, um, that they just wouldn't have thought about the world in those ways. And so it's really important for us to always center the cultural 
um, as the site of the political. So these are the two spaces. Please let us know if you would like to partner with us in any way. Um, visit our websites, visit our uh, social media. Um, we have some really exciting programming coming up in April, but also there's been fantastic things that have happened in um, March. So if you haven't already, there is just so many resources on this YouTube page and also on the Commune YouTube page that you can use um, to think about things like state violence, like police brutality, like COVID vaccinations. Um, think about important intellectuals like Wamba Diawamba, um, who was, a, was the father of so much of our Pan-African thoughts, particularly his conversation around the communal palaver. Um, we have some extraordinary um, conversations that happened at the beginning of the lockdown about how the state was on purpose, make it incredibly difficult for immigrants and impoverished people, particularly women. Um, so yeah, this is, this is a repository, this is a resource. Um, and, and please understand it as that, that we are in the service of, of you, Bramfontein, of you, Johannesburg, and of you, the continent of Africa. Today, though, we are doing something a little bit different. Um, we have the extraordinary cast of Islilo, which we'll find out what that is about in two seconds. Um, we are going to... One, celebrate that we have a sold out show. Come on, somebody. Uh, three days before opening night. Come on. That just doesn't happen in the theatre world anymore. It just doesn't. Um, so we are so excited. We are so proud and we are so honoured to have this group of um, actors open up the Forge Theatre because despite the fact that like you've seen things happening on the forge theater theater makers haven't actually used the forge theater up until now so we are so excited um today to be in conversation with them and uh yeah to learn about this incredible project but also to think about arts and the role of um theater makers in this country a little bit more seriously so i am going to ask all three of you to let everyone here <laughs> and at home know who you are and what your role is in Islilo. Starting with Usia. Uh, my name is Yambonga Ntubeki. I am the writer and the producer for Islilo. Okay, my name is Tseho Fato Masikwa Ming and I'm the actor of Islilo. The actor, not he a... <laughs> the actor. He actor. <laughs> Okay, my name is Balen Ernest, and I'm the director of Isililo. Perfect. Can you let us know who else is not here? So we've got uh, another director, Ngumi Sandimeni. So she's uh, directing with Ernest Baleni. And we've got uh, Zanele Mtombini, who is part of the cast. Great. So um, for those who don't know, what is Isililo? Uh, <laughs> yeah, take it. Esililo is a, I feel like I've, I've been talking about it <laughs> for a long time. Uh, so Esililo, it's a, it's a story that looks into the state of institutions in South Africa, but through a life of a young boy whose life uh, changes because of uh, things that happen in his life, and that includes his father's health, which result into him uh, having to lose his dreams, like the love of his life, uh, soccer dreams and all that. So yeah, we we following that young boy mm. in that in that environment. Yeah. Sure. Why the name Isililo? Uh, Isililo. It's it's a it's, it's a closer name uh, that says cry for help. So how it came about uh, when we had a, a conversation with Sia, it's this show. It speaks for the people who cannot speak for themselves. So it's the voice of the voiceless. So we're basically crying for help mm. with, with, with the whole piece. That's, 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 where, that's what the title uh, means. Sure. Um, so I'm going to bring Tehu in, in into, yeah. into the conversation because <laughs> I see he's going to try yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hide a little um, bit. Like but I yeah, oh, oh. do you want to add? Or? Yeah, like uh, Ernest is saying, is, um, it's a cry. So which means we, we are the agents between these people who um, are, are in pain and 
and, and, and those people who are in the higher positions, mm. you understand? So we are mediating between. So as they are crying, they, their tears must not just fall down. You know, they, we have to help them so that these guys who are there uh, at the top, we obviously won't mention the, the names. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, we have to be there for them. Um, we we heard their cries and we are here to help them. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So I'm interested in process, right? Um, I ask this as a person who's watching with a curious journalistic mind um, how the story kind of came together. So I'm wearing two hats, and then the second hat that I'm wearing is as a, a, a cultural worker and a theatre maker myself how the actual, the whole day, I've been saying this. <laughs> how the this <laughs> of, of Islilo happened. And, and, and to maybe clarify what this is, is yeah. how we developed characters, how we developed um, posture, how we developed accent, how we developed all these very important the theatrical interventions to serve the actual story right the story that was this big thing in south africa that was covered ad nauseum um that was on our screens uh that was on enca that was on every single um publication right how how do we translate that thing to the thing we then see on on the theater and anyone can jump in on this question I'll just jump in the beginning, very, very beginning of sure. it, and then you guys can, can, can take over. I think also <laughs> the nicest thing about the work that we do as theater makers is that sometimes the ideas start as this small, and then it ends up being this thing. And only the audience only experiences this part, and the process, there is so much that happens in process before you see the final product. There is sweating, there is us not agreeing with each other and all that. But maybe before I get onto that, uh, I think it, it started with me being a consent citizen. So I, I when the Black Face City Man incident happened, because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very much into reading things like uh, articles, uh, doing research for no reason. And then I came across the Life Face City Man incident. Particularly one headline that said, at least 144 people died during life as a So I was just uh, disturbed by the word at least. Uh, sure. Now obviously the journalists are using their own languages. But for me, when you translate it into your own languages, like if you can say it in Kosa, it sounds very disturbing. You can say at least when you've got so many people that are dead. And one other thing that then disturbed me, it's hearing people being compensated a certain amount of money. Obviously, it, it made a difference to the families, I don't know. But for me, from where I was standing, I was like, who puts a price on someone's life? How do you decide that if we pay this much, then we are okay, mm. we will forgive what, whatever that happened? So from then, I then decided to start doing research. I, I, I was talking to journalists that were covering the story from Life is a Dimeni. Uh, at this point, I didn't even know what I was going to do. I just wanted to get the information, more information. And from meeting the journalist, that led me to meeting the family members who were directly affected in Life City Many incident. And then I spoke to the families and they shared their pain. I would sit with them for hours. We've got recordings that we sometimes listen to to get inspiration for whatever that we're doing on stage. So I recorded them understanding what went down and how it started, how it got to be messy and all that. Uh, process. After I was done with all that, then I decided, Hore, because I'm a theatre maker, this is what I do. I think it would be best if I, I create a play out of it. And then, obviously, you can't, you can't be, you're not a man, one man show. It was not a one hand, it needed people. Then I called Numisa, who is the director, the lady who's not with us now. And I shared the idea with her. It was still very raw at that time. I just knew that I wanted to do a play, and she was keen. She came on board, uh, and then I started writing like some things that never even made it to the to the <laughs> stage, and some made. 
And from then, me and Mumisa decided, because I, I already know Chilis as a friend, Ginger as a friend as well. Uh, I didn't have a relationship with Zanel at that time. So we then sat down with Mumisa, we were like, who can we then work with? So the closest people for me were my friends, because then I knew who I can rely yeah. on. And then I called Chilis. And then we started doing it as a two-hander. It was just the two of us with Numisa. Throughout the process, it was not working. We kept seeing the third person. We didn't know where that person was coming from, but we kept seeing the third person. And we saw a lady. We were just like, because this is just two guys. Whoa, what if we bring a lady? What would be the story be in this sense? And we brought in Zanel M. Tombini, who was part of the cast as well. And then throughout the process, then Ginger joined us as well. And that's how this team was formed. And maybe you can then talk about uh, how yeah. you, your characters and everything yeah, else. Um, yeah, th thanks, ta, ta for that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, in terms of the character developments, it was not easy. Yeah, it, it's emotionally draining and uh, um, it requires a lot of time. So, because I, I, I have not experienced someone close to me who had like such illnesses, you know, the schizophrenia and all the autisms. And, and so I had to dig deeper and research about all these things, you know, because as, a, as, a, as an actor, you cannot um, perform or play fake people. Mm or tell people lies, you know, you have to be truthful to your characters. And someone who's watching them must relate that human, you know. So, yeah, it's, it, it, was, it was something that needed to, 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 to be fine-tuned. After getting all those, the, 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 the points that you need as an actor so that you can bring the character to life, you need to now dwell in it and leave those people. Because now I'm playing, in, uh, different characters. So it, it, yeah, it requires it required a lot mm -hmm. of time because all of them they they are different and they have to be shown like you were saying physically that they you know this person is like this and this one is like this, you know. So in terms of um Joseph Mabizela, Joseph Mabizela is the father of Trina who <laughs> yeah, he's he's going through a lot. And it's, it's, it's heartbreaking to see a person like that in real life going through all of those stages. And uh, regarding that, they are, they are living with their kids. Some are living with their kids. Some are living with their parents. You know, and it's not really nice to, to have someone like Joseph Mabitzela who wants to see his son being successful in the football career. Mm. But they cannot, you know, ha have that thing of going on and on supporting them because of the, uh, the illness or the body is deteriorating, you understand? So um, even in real life, it's so heartbreaking to see Umama Afuna Uksabotumtana. Umama wants to go to uh, the graduation, but they can't because of they have like kidney problems, they are in hospitals, in and out, and it's so heartbreaking. But mombona lo mama, you know, we are fisa ugu uya, guma graduation umtana, but they can't. So it's 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 what Mabitela is going through, you know, uh, to in, in those stages of his life and this illness. And in in terms of Ben, Ben is that person who's outside of the family, you know. But when we play him, we play him as as, as you know, he's close to the family because he's the friend of of Joseph, of which mm. he's the supporting. Do you want to tell us who Ben is? Ben is the, 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 the coach. Um, ben is coach from, from the, 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 the football uh, team. So Ben is, is the friend of Joseph Mabizela from a young age. They were playing soccer together, you know. So he decided to go on with the, 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 the coaching thing as he, he grew older. And now he's like the Umtanaka Joseph Mabitela. So that's more like his his son mm. too, you know. Mm. So um, he, he he gives that support to the family when he sees that Tena is you know is having troubles at home. Then he he is there for him. 
although sometimes like, I, I understand the lentil because of Bernard doesn't say anything. You mm. understand? Because we do have those people who banning Emakaya, but they cannot say anything. Would you please help me? I, you know, so you have to actually ask them so that they can talk. So Ben is like that. He, he he's that person. He can see you that you are being troubled. But now, in order for us, he has to yeah, you and yeah. chica you and you yeah. know a little bit so that you can just yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, talk talk uh, uh, what is it that that is troubling you. Mm. So um, yeah, he's 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 the he's the uh, he's the support in the family, you know. So we we re we really have those people in in sure, life, and sure. we really need them. In life. Yeah. So if I'm gonna go on and talk about all these characters, I'm not gonna. <laughs> <be> <laughs> <there>. <laughs> no, no, that's <laughs> not. I, I but I wanna yeah. before Mr. Yeah. Director so comes in, I wanna reframe this question a little bit, because Ben, okay, Ben is my favorite character. <laughs> I love Ben so much. He's <laughs> so yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. But this is this is what I wanna talk about is um, uh, and I and it's the note that I gave when I when I watched the play again um now at the Forge right is that as theater makers we don't have the luxury of saying these are the structural problems in south africa these are the things that you should know we worked so hard in our research we don't have that luxury as theater makers yeah. so we have to develop um we have to develop various methodologies as theater makers to signal to the world that we know what we're doing but also so that the audience is, is, is receptive and can actually take very difficult stories in without, um, without just being like, oh my gosh, this is too much, right? So for example, I think of the nonsense that happened in Europe with the Dadaist movement. And I don't know if you know about that, but it was ugh, ugh, a stupid, <laughs> stupid thing that the Europeans were doing after the Second World War. <laughs> where they were like, oh, everything doesn't have meaning. Me, me, me. And then they, um, in the art specifically, took out the human elements, right? Yeah. And so you'd go watch theater, ma like theater makers just throw a tantrum on stage. And it was just so nonsensical. And it, I mean, of course it, it lasted, I think in the, in the history, it lasted 20 minutes. I mean, 20 years, but 20 minutes in my life. Um, because it just, it, 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 it forgot that art fundamentally is a human thing right mm. so in in kind of that that's the the framework for the for the question but but what i'm actually wanting to to know here is the different ways in which we mobilized our theatrical tools right so sia has been doing a bad job being <laughs> the salesman of this play every time he's on tv he's like eh, life is too many things are tough right but this play is actually really funny it's incredibly funny it has um elements of absurdism it has physical theater it is incredibly warm it is so gorgeous to see these two young people in love it's a love story fundamentally it's a story about heartbreak um but it is also a story that takes the best of South African theatre and puts it at the front, right? So we remember um, our forefathers developed this thing called uh, workshop theatre or poor theatre mm. where you have to use, and, and it, it was in the context of apartheid, right? Like we black actors couldn't be seen to be rehearsing. So you had to figure out what's the fastest thing that we can do so that it looks like, it looks like things, are, things are fine. And so they, they knew that they had to train. They knew that they had to train. Firstly, their bodies needed to be incredibly strong. But secondly, their props couldn't be super involved. So we couldn't be like our white friends and make these big productions and, and so on and so forth because the state was just going to burn those things down, right? So we needed to go, cool, we've got cups at our disposal. So now cups are the most important thing in terms of developing a character. And that's what it, what is the case with, with you guys. So. I'm just curious in terms of how did you, um, yeah, how, how, how did you think through the various like theatrical tools? Um, yeah, that's the question. <laughs> yeah, I think for me the truth is we as, we as uh, I'm gonna specifically say black people because I'm from black society. So we, we hide behind jokes 
you understand? So, so, so I will be saying to you, and we laugh about it. But to be honest, when I get home, I don't have anything to eat. So what, what, what we wanted to do as, 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 as the team is that let's create something that is not heavy for people because we're not, we're not, being s we're not forcing people to say what, to, 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 to take the message. To but it's it. something that you can laugh about it and then as you sit home and reflect, you say, you know what? This is actually what's 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 going down. Mm. So 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 then that's that that that's how the choice of making the elements of our play came upon. Let's laugh about serious things, and then when you really get to that point, you, you say, you know what? Actually, this is happening. And so now, yeah, we had mm. we, we decided to take that that route. Yeah. Mm. And how did we use cups as a device? So the cup. As you see the cup, like after drinking a coffee and then you see it in the dustbin, it's a useless thing. So we've realized that what happened at Life SET Man, like there were people who like by labor tree to are uselessly. So in terms of the cup, we we were like, okay, this thing is useless. Let's take it and reborn rona as the team. Mm. Because it's something Eloren making. I see us. But ev as, uh, uh, how shall be the story? And then as you relate, you, you see, you know what? Actually, this is what went down in terms of making people uselessly so. So those cups, we're throwing them around like it's nothing else. But those cups represent actually peoples, not just cups. So those are people's lives, what she has spoken about in terms of like there were 144 people died, but there's nothing that we. We, we see happening. It's like nothing happened. So in terms of those cup, the message that we're trying to convey is that this thing is useless, but it's it's useful in someone's life. Mm. So mm. that's that's how mm. it came up. Yeah. I want to bring uh, Zanele and Misa in the room, even though they're not here. <laughs> um, and OK, so unfortunately, I'm programming it, so I can't write a big thesis about this play. but. To me, the role of the woman um, politically and creatively is really interesting for me because the role that Uzanele plays is so... Um, so she plays the love interest of Utina, right? And uh, in playing the love interest of Utina um, shows the real rupture, the real... A cost, what is at stake when um, our lives are disrupted in this way. So it, in part, this is a love story, right? And so we see that in the character. I'm not trying to give everything away. But also, um, one of the characters that she plays is this um, hateful, <laughs> hateful <laughs> um, yes. uh, civil servant, right? Mm -hmm. Who mistreats... Um, psychiatric patients who is just like i do not have time for that right now interestingly enough i have a lot of uh empathy actually for this really hateful character because i think it tells us something about capitalism it tells us one that women are always at the center of very difficult um care work that is often not supported that is often institutionalized so that black and brown women get incredibly hard and become incredibly difficult people because of course if you're dealing with such traumatic things all the time your outlet to people is now harsh and actually quite inhumane because you're trying to recover your humanity so you're trying to protect yourself right so for me when i see a, a nurse who's hateful one i'm just like okay girl okay all right <laughs> but i also know that the states and this is a conversation we've been having consistently at the forge it's called state violence when the state cuts down money for public institutions that is a violence for the people that are at the at the front right it is direct violence when we cannot have... Um, so, for example, we cannot um, hire more doctors because of the national budget at the moment. How can you not hire more doctors during a pandemic? I just... 
right? The state, for example, tells us we cannot hire more teachers. We cannot have more um, money for curriculum. How now, brown cow, can you do that in a, in a, in a context in which people need the education, right, yeah. to better themselves, but also need education to understand what the COVID-19 pandemic is and how it directly affects their lives, right? Mm. And so I have a lot of time, actually, for that character who, by design, we should hate, yeah. right? And this is the note that I gave to Uzanele, is that I think, of course, let's hate you, right? But you better, you better, um, the term actors use is you better sex that character up. You better make that like a sexy character, not sexy. <laughs> you better um, imbue so much in that character so that we remember that there's a humanity there. You know, um, because people are not just hateful people, right? Okay, some people are actually psychopaths, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but for the most part, people aren't actually just terrible people, right? Mm -hmm. They have been produced by capitalism to be terrible people. And I think that's the fabulous thing that this play is able to do. It's able to do very big critique i don't even think you were necessarily thinking about this when you were making it but your play is a critique on on neoliberalism your play is a, a critique on the states your play is um a critique on capitalism your play is a critique on patriarchy your your play is uh invitation into the conversation around mental health right so i'm just curious as to what so those are big ideas those are ideas that are up here but what what is um, as human beings and as artists, what is the impulse to tell the human story? Because those, you know, like uh, the story of capitalism is the story of how humans undergo capitalism, you know? Um, Mr. Writer, how do we, how do we get, um, yeah, what is the impulse to tell the human story? Why did you become an actor? It's a nonsense job. No one pays us. You know, everyone thinks we can act for free. Everyone says, ah, Nancy actor, okay, let's do it. And you're like, eh? Um, for exposure. Right? <laughs> so, um, you know, what is the impulse to, to tell those human stories as a creative? I think, uh, for me, it's always about being honest and being truthful. So, just to go back to the nest that you're talking about, who is very hateful. It's, it's actually a reference of someone we know. So I literally have someone who stays very close to where I stay. I'm not going to say where I stay because now you know. <laughs> <laughs> so when in my research process, I would go to, I would visit clinics. Like just to, because then I wanted to, it, there's something about you you're just writing and you're creating characters out of your head and they don't land. But there's something about getting, uh, getting inspiration from something, from things that exist already, and then you take your own path from what already exists. So the next comes from when I went to that institution, to that clinic, I got in, I sat like everyone who's here for help. And this other guy goes, now the forge will have to forgive me for this because I don't know if the language will be appropriate. This guy goes to... PG, PG. PG, right? <laughs> so this guy's out of, you can see in the clinic, that clinic set up, this guy goes to this nest. So there's a nest that obviously always directs you to which room to go, depending on what you're suffering from. So this guy goes to this lady who's supposed to direct them. This guy apparently had an STI. I know this because it was shouted. So as, she, as this guy goes there, there's like a smaller conversation happening, but we can hear because the nest and it's the nurse that I know from my... S and I don't know her like that. I was just seeing a different person in the institution. And that's what brought about the question of, are they really these people like this? Or they are forced by the institutions that they work under? Yeah. And I realized then that actually, because I know her personally, and this is the side that I've never seen, but because of where she is at, the environment, and probably the equipment and everything they're working under. <coughs> Sorry. 
that's why she was she was that kind of a person. And for me also, I've always just wanted to to represent, as you see, like Cynthia as this loving lady. I think we've always misinterpreted black people. We've always misinterpreted, especially black women. Every show that you see, maybe let me not say every show, but most of the shows that you see, when you sit back and reflect, you're like, but how come we don't know this woman? We, we are raised by mothers. I'm still yearning to see my mother on stage, oh. whether on a television soapy, wherever that is. I've never seen it. And when we were now exploring this, it was an idea of, why can't we have a show that has got beautiful love from two black people? A woman who loves the boyfriend, just as it is, without having even to complicate it and make it like, because we always want to, I understand there's obviously levels to stories that you'd want to bring to enhance the story. And I always feel like those things always then misinterpret the women. And we always then uh, paint women to be these certain people mm -hmm. that they are not. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was always about just, can we go to the truth? Can we go to the women that, that raised us, that we know, without going, because everyone, if you think play women, already everyone f thinks mm -hmm. that women. And I'm like, uh, but those are not the women we know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was, it was out of that, that experience. And then we brought it in the space. And obviously with everyone's contribution, ideas are challenged trying to make sense of it someone will say no but why is this relationship perfect and not but at the end of the day we all a team working towards one goal to make this story the story that yeah. we want and that's how we came about the characters that you see and i think it it's clear that that nurse is affected by the institution and not that she's that kind of a person mm. yeah i think i think that's a very powerful intervention actually like uh I really thank you. Thank you for, for clarifying that, and especially as a male, um, not male, as a man, eh, 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 eh. you're politically correct. As M. Numzane, who is a <laughs> theatre maker, <laughs> thank you so much um, for that intervention. Um, and I think this is something that I said to Ungumisa actually, is that um, uh, I think all of you are incredibly intelligent as actors, right? As directors as well. I think it's really important for us to take seriously that actors are really smart people. Um, you cannot tell the stories and um, tell appropriately the stories of people across the world without having a real sense of intuition, right? So now I'm going to ask a question. You don't need to... Uh, put yourselves on the line <laughs> you can you can evade this question as far as possible so that you get funding in the future <laughs> but you know we are in a context in which uh it's the fourth week now of the occupation at the national arts council um offices right um actors are incredibly incredibly traumatized they are hungry they are upset they haven't eaten effectively since the beginning of the COVID-19 lockdown last year. Um, Natin Tetwa basically com uh, confessed to having stolen 300 million with his friends. By the way, I think there's a direct correlation between all this money that has disappeared and all the new reality shows in South Africa. Because where did all these people find money to go to Tetra's during, during a lockdown? Anyway. That's my personal thoughts. Um, so I am not necessarily looking for a politically charged um, answer here, but I am curious in the context in which we find ourselves in, and this is even before COVID, right? Like theaters were not getting full. I, that just was not the case. Um, people in South Africa, I don't think people in South Africa don't have an aptitude for theater, but um, I think the prices were incredibly alienating. The places in which there were um, stages, professional stages, were really far from people that would love to actually enter the theater. Um, you know, artists were more and more, unless the NC is directly paying you and you are Arthur Mufukati, you are not getting the slice of the pie as an artist, right? So I'm just curious as to two gentlemen at the end, why have you continued to be 
artists in this context, you know, there is no winning here. <laughs> it's just no winning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think for me, uh, we don't choose to become artists, so I call it a calling. So it's something, even if sometimes I tried and then but it kept on coming back and coming back. So it, it, it's more of a calling now than just being an artist because we change people's, we change people's lives, we touch people's soul through art. So I, I, I think, yeah, despite the fact that uh, our country doesn't take uh, entertainment industry serious. It, it's something that we cannot, there's something that we cannot do. However, I would like to thank people who, who are in the forefront fighting for us as artists that has been sleeping in the NAC. I know some people in the Pekoffs as well in the Free State. So they are really trying to change the situation. And I think it's time that the situation needs to be changed. Because without storytelling, like, in the whole world, we cannot go anywhere. Because for you to understand someone's culture, it, it's from storytelling. Like, now, even when the pandemic hit us, it's, 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 it's our, our industry that makes sure that people uh, become aware. Yeah. So uh, for me, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm like, I didn't choose to be an artist, but I, I think I was born an, a storyteller. So sure. I, I, I love <coughs> unfolding those untold stories. So in terms of the, our government not taking us serious, they are not taking us serious. It's a, it's a serious issue besides being political about it, but it affects us as artists. It's not being political. To be honest, our entertainment, like it, our industry doesn't, they don't take us serious. And, and, and the sad part is our, our industry, it's it, 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 it contributor to the GDP of the country. And, and that's something I, I think they are not aware of, but they know, actually, they, they know. And, and I, I've been to overseas several times now, and I've seen how, how artists treated overseas than us. You know, like, in France, theater is a culture. It's, it's something, and the government makes sure that people knows about theater. So when I come back and then I, I, we do a show and then I perform for seats, I, I become so sad because uh, theater is supposed to be a culture as well in our country mm. because that's where we change people's lives. Mm. That's where we change people's soul. That's where, like, storytelling does a lot, does a lot. So yeah, I'm, 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 that, that part really makes me sad. But I think, yeah, our leaders who are in the forefront, thank you very much. They are very doing a good job for us. We are hoping for the better change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah, um, well, we are going to say sometimes we would support because of your interest. Uh, theater, theater. In most cases, like we, we, we tell the truth. We, we, we don't even filter it, you know. And I believe that uh, the government knows that, would, you know, these theater guys, these actors, these uh, uh, um, dancers and whatever, they, they, they attack us in most cases. Mm -hmm. And and well, we do, because of the is in those zero well. You understand? Of of which that's just like this uh, the, the the very same project that we are we are doing right now. Uh, definitely they'll be like seeing it and they'll be like, I know I see born it idea. <laughs> we we don't see it, you know, and be acting like that. So um I believe that they know that if they can give us like the platform to do more, we they'll be giving us more weapons to actually <laughs> come <laughs> come after them you know so that <laughs> so that is why um you know they're shutting us out because they do they do shut us out you know I, everyone knows you know i'm an artist you know they they know that but we're not here for 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 all of that this thing comes from within lentole sizalwana you understand and and um indomina enyenze ukuthi ngihlalenyela is because of um, there are people who are abandoned in the society, like there are children who are not 
focused that much with Muntangaze Afundi Nwati in Nwati, and then you know and understand Konabanto good, they are slow, you understand, and they are Konabantaba fast, and, and so on. So we as theater makers, we, we help these guys who cannot actually understand the story from reading. Mm. You understand? Mm. So that is why they are set works. You, you understand? We go to schools and we actually do that uh, in the curriculum. Maybe we, we do it as a play. You know, we, we, we produce it and, and we direct it as a play and then we go and perform it to, to the students. Mm. So that even those students who are who do not understand the novel from reading it, when they see it, it becomes easier for them. It'll be like, oh, now I'm uncle, uncle. Oh, yes, this thing. you understand. So yeah. I, 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 I do it for them because I know there are people who, 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 who are not that good in just grabbing everything. And then mafia go test, you know, go and see my And but when they've seen a show on theater, they'll be like. Hey man, this question, and Okonko did this and this and this and this. You understand? We come on a little because of we born mm. It's easy to see something on TV and mm, exactly. yeah, yes, it, exactly. it, it, it's so easy. And uh, if you are very excited to hey, go, the way we are in a corner. So, so we are there for them. We are there for the society. We are there for the children. Mm. You understand? There's children theater. We have to, they have to know what is happening around them. You know, in terms of this play, uh, people, Many people didn't know about the life of Siti Menisaga. No, like, it's just only few people, because Abanta was barely in Daba. But people like entertainment, you know? So, yes, I barely in Daba, but once Chile says, hey, I'm performing in Xas, uh, the play is about this and this, and then they will come. So, see, in Daba's Abu, Masila. We entertain them, yet we are educating them exactly. at the same time. Yeah, you yeah. Know, so that is why we are doing this. We are doing this for the people, mm. with them, yeah. even. You know, yeah. I mean, as you're speaking, I'm, I'm, I'm going to come <laughs> to you. I'm going to try. I'm, <laughs> I'm away of time, so we're trying to close this conversation. But as you're speaking, um, oh, I had the big displeasure of going to the university currently known as Rhodes University, <coughs> but maybe appropriately known as Rhodes University because of the nonsense that it, um, continues to be that university. But um, we, uh, I had incredible teachers that were very few and far in between, mostly nonsense teachers, but incredible teachers that were few and far in between. And in the drama department, I had um, Professor Andrew Buckland, who um, so uh, is, 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 is such a big influence intellectually for me. Um, because he studied as a clown, right? And um, uh, what's that big? What's that big? Uh, the the big circus, the 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 very fancy one. It, it, the no 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 no. It's Cirque du Soleil. Yes yes yes. Him and his son eventually um, perform at that level, right? But it's really important to take clowning seriously and this starts off with a person who's really important for all of us um, I think in the theater community whether we know or not um, is a is a is an author thinker theater maker named Dario Fo. Now Dario Fo tracks the history of um, how um, how the cultures of ancient um, is it French society? Yo, I'm going to get zero for this essay. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, basic, oh, Italian, Italian, Italian society and, and how the beginnings of theatre started there, right? And he talked about, and this is directly linked to um, your comments right now, he talked about this thing that was called the, the, the court jester and the giulare. Now, they, the, the elites decided that they needed entertainment, right? But the actors that were often chosen for this entertainment were, again, very smart people who knew that um, their printing press didn't exist, so people couldn't really read what was happening, couldn't like think through what was happening. And so at the marketplace, people would be like, you know, we really wish we had someone to help us think through some of these things. So this, so um, what happened, which, to me, I think of the Jularia, when I think of the Jularia, I think of Maskandi artists immediately. To me, those are the same things. Who were able to use the arts to tell 
people what was happening, right? So they would be like, today such and such a person has been killed for these terrible things. But in order to not be arrested by the elites, they would do it as a clown and, and make it funny. And, and so eventually the, the elites were like, oh, we also, wanna, we also wanna have laughs. Why is it only the poor people that can laugh? They bring them in. So eventually it get, they get institutionalized as what is called the court jester. Now the court jester were people that were entertaining for the elites and not necessarily doing the critical work of actually speaking about what is this thing. And so there's, there's these two distinctions and it's called radical clowning. I think that's what you guys do. Um, is, 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 is thinking through the ways in which the societal ills affects us but in a way that we can take it and go, okay, that's exactly what it is, right? Like I watch a lot of TV, a lot of nonsense TV as well, because I need to figure out beyond the news, right? Like yeah. I always say to my friends, I do a lot of intellectual thinking all the time. <laughs> I need to watch nonsense because I think also there is something very instructive about nonsense. The, that nonsense. I think there's really instructive ways for me as a theater maker as well to to imagine that like some people sit like this and some other people sit like that. And you know that, I think that's really fascinating for us. Um, sorry for going on that tangent, but I think it's, it's really important to connect you to the lineage of um, ancient and um, historical um, theater makers who've been doing this for a very long time, you know? Yeah. Um, so that when you are in South Africa making this particular play, you know that you are part of a global history, not just part of a South African history, you're part of a global history yeah. um, of this thing. You know, we had, um, uh, we had some workshops last year and uh, we, we talked about radical clowning with Daniel Buckland. Um, but I, we also, um, I'm forgetting the concept, it's making me so sad. Um, yeah, but effectively, it's kind of the more grotesque version of the clown who, who, who makes us question, you know, um, who makes us really question what is happening. But because they're doing it in grotesque ways, we're like, ha ha, this is funny, this is funny. And then you see yourself a little bit and then you go, wait, wait, wait. And then you like laugh again because immediately that's where the next joke is. And I think there's something about your play that really does that. And I think that's powerful. We are pressed for time, but I, I want to know for those of the the lucky <laughs> that that the lucky that ones. the lucky ones that have um, uh, that have booked their seats. Um, the streets are talking, and there might be two extra shows, but the, that's just chatter <laughs> in the streets. We still need to <laughs> we still need to confirm. Um, what what can they expect tomorrow? What are your hopes for tomorrow? Um, and for the for the rest of the run, what can we expect? And all three of you. Man, and in closing. <laughs> in closing, uh, man, just just come and, and journey with us. It's fun. It's it's we're just playing. But at, I, I think, uh, like like uh, Ginger said, we uh, we as black people relate. We we we're very humorous. I don't know if that's an English word that exists. It, uh, but yeah. we relate more <laughs> to humor uh, than pain. We always hide behind humor. It doesn't matter how painful it is. Like someone could die now, we'd always try to find a way to make it uh, humorous just to get to avoid the pain that we feel. But if, if people must come, uh, I'm, I'm sure they feel, they hear life is a demand and they think it's going to be tears on the floor, people will be crying. <laughs> but it's going gonna, it's gonna to be fun to watch. I mean, like we, we, the characters that we have, you were just describing clowning. And I think actually it's how that, that's basically how our most of the institutions are, are now basically puppets mm. it feels like there's just somebody up there holding a string and everyone is just dancing mm. to that and that's exactly what happened with life city many it might be easy for us to say uh yes the nurses are bad and all that but there's somewhere where it comes from and i think our story narrates that beautifully because we're focusing on a personal story but then we reveal all that all that happens basically from that that saying that goes when the elephants fight mm. the grass is usually the ones that suffers the most mm. but those who have bought their tickets uh <laughs> please man come and and join us uh 
the streets are talking, we might have <laughs> many, 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 many shows. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the, the streets aren't talking that much. I, I, I think for me, this, I, I, honestly, this is nice life problems. Yeah. I think especially during this time, COVID, and to still have houses selling at this time, this means something for me. Yeah. Not only about uh, just people coming in, but it means that we are not just here as talking heads. It's because of the work that we do. Exactly. It's because of the work that exactly. we put in. And people are coming to experience that because they feel it is worth it. And they feel that they cannot miss it. So you might see us now and not recognize us because we don't appear on TV. <laughs> <laughs> but these are the guys that are making things happen now. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think I think people should come and, and, and have fun. Yeah, yeah, don't come with that mentality of, yo, we're going to cry the whole show. No, no. <laughs> No, yeah, you're gonna laugh. You gonna you gonna be sad, um, cause you know it's an emotional journey, you know, and yeah, it's different emotions, you know, all in all. So yeah, just come and yeah, watch the show. Definitely gonna um, enjoy it. Yeah. Oh <laughs> yeah. In closing, I always <laughs> say go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, thank you. I I I would I would really love to thank the forge. You understand in this yeah. uh, time that we are able to put this work because we are in set times now whereby we are not able to put up this kind of we are not be able to make a, a theater show man. so I, I, I would really love to say thank you so i, I normally say to to to, to the cast during our results sorry let's just show people what we did and let them decide mm -hmm. so i will say to the people just come in and join with us and you decide yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for honoring us with your work. We are so unbelievably honored to have you open the, the Forge Theatre. We wanted to open it last year, but last year the world ended. Um, <laughs> so we are, we are beyond, beyond grateful. Thank you so much for your time, for your intellectual gen generosity, for your capacity, for your training. I watch these people train every it's hectic <laughs> <laughs> you know um and you know and i i i was saying to to see in a different private conversation now i think don't ever underestimate the value of the work that you do how deeply talented all of you are how incredibly smart all of you are and um we are so honored to be part of your legacy we hope to bring you in for multiple projects um, yeah. as, as we carry on. Um, you know, uh, I, I'm personally so proud to, to be part of trying to keep the arts alive at this time. But the arts, are li but the, you know, arts will always be alive because we are fundamentally always. human beings and we yeah. need that, right? And that's our form of socialization. Yeah. But thank you for the honor <coughs> of your work. Uh, Zanele, Ngumisa, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. I, I, I am so confident to say that this is one of the best things you're gonna watch in the theater scene for a very long time. I, I know that, I know that. Um, and Change it is truly a gorgeous, gorgeous, incredible place. So uh, if the streets carry on talking and we open up um, ticket sales again, man, come. Um, I've got no doubt we might go for another <laughs> week. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we again, opening. the streets haven't talked that much. <laughs> but, <laughs> but honestly, come, um, you know, and of different ages, come of, diff of different ethnicities. I mean, the play is um, in, in, in most South African languages, which is so phenomenal. Again, which is a testament to your brilliance as a cast. Um, so... You know, we are so excited to have these wonderful human beings um, open up the forge tomorrow. Um, we hope you join us. Um, thank you so much. Thank you for having us.